Hello everyone. I've come to a small forest in my local area to show you a hidden world of wildlife that's been hidden right under your nose this whole time. It's very often that wildlife enthusiasts will walk through forests like this and not realise the complete bounty of animals that are to be found if you just look a little bit closer at the ground. I'm Ben and welcome to Nature Scope. key component to finding wildlife is water. It is an absolute magnet for all types of wildlife. They use it for feeding, travelling, their life cycles and being in close proximity to water is not key but it does aid your chance of finding some cool animals. So how are we going to find these animals? Well the forest is just behind me here and I'm going to be heading into that forest and I'll show you exactly how we're going to find these animals. So as you would expect in a forest uh, full of trees, um, those trees are going to get hit by storms, all sorts of rough weather, uh, tough conditions, and they might just get old and die. Um, sickness can be something that takes a tree and you end up with pieces of uh, logs, branches, twigs falling to the forest floor. Now it's the bigger pieces of wood like this log here. This one looks very old, it's covered in moss and the best way you can find some of the smaller but very interesting wildlife that you get across the forest is by turning these logs over and seeing what you can see underneath. So log piles like this are perfect for wildlife. A complete array of animals will be sheltering under these logs. It's important to note that during the day you've got a better chance of finding animals because all of the animals that are nocturnal or scared of predators will be sheltering during the day, coming out at night to feed and travel. I'm going to be showing you how to shift logs like this on the forest floor safely for yourself and for wildlife. I always use garden gloves, the reason being it gives me an extra layer of protection against sharp pieces of bark, splinters and also any animals that might bite you. Now there are very few animals in the UK that will bite you, but we do have one, the adder, which is a venomous species of snake. Keeping that in mind, and always keeping that in mind, whenever I shift the log, I'm always cautious and ready to back away and give any animals that might be under there distance. If you see an adder in the wild, please keep your distance. These animals are very, very cool and very interesting, but they can be dangerous under the wrong circumstances. If you are a younger individual, please do this activity supervised. If you're an older individual, always, always show caution. So I'm going to be shifting this log slowly up, looking at the animals underneath, um, and I'll show you any animals that I find that are interesting. Um, and then once I'm done, I'll slowly lower the log back down so that any animals under there are sheltered and safe from predators or disturbing their sleep cycle. So I'm just going to slowly shift it up and I can already see an array of beetles, um, slugs, worms, um, I'll show you them on the camera. Um, but then once you're done and you've looked at the animals, um, you just let, slowly lower it down. If you do want to take animals and put them into small tubs to look at them, you can do that. Just make sure you release them exactly where you find them. So I'm going to slowly push it back down, shelter all the beetles, as if you leave them exposed, things like birds up in the forest canopy will fly down, grab them, eat them, and then you've essentially caused the death of uh, the animals that you're serving. So we're going to go round through the forest behind me, do this with other logs and see what cool animals I can find. I'll film them, so hopefully we can find some interesting animals. And so wish me luck and I guess you'll see what we find. Snails like these are a common find on the forest floor. The most common species are garden snails and grove snails. However, there are many other species to be found. They feed primarily on plant leaves and are more active at night. 
often reusing the same spot to rest day after day. Also nocturnal, slugs also inhabit these sheltered areas. These shellless gastropods often produce copious amounts of mucus to aid their movement, retain moisture, and also sometimes containing toxins to aid in defense from predation. Although worms are found primarily underground in the soil, they can sometimes be found near the surface, especially around decomposing wood. The reason for this is that as the wood breaks down, the byproducts and the microbes that thrive on these byproducts helps to create nutrient rich soil around the rotting wood, attracting these worms. Beetles are another animal that will inhabit forest floor wood, some of which will be detritivores and others predators. I found two species of millipede when lifting logs, the black millipede with its more iconic look and the ability to curl up into a ram's horn shape for protection, and the flatback millipede, which can excrete a cyanide-like chemical from its sides when threatened. Both are detritivores consuming decomposing plant matter and wood. There are a few woodlouse species in the UK. They are very common, living on not only the forest floor, but under any organic shelter. They share a similar niche to millipedes consuming decomposing plant material and also fungi that is living on these surfaces. The common centipede is a forest floor hunter that uses a combination of large mandibles and venom to overpower its prey. Its diet often includes worms, slugs, spiders, and other small bugs. Despite their name, this species only actually has 15 pairs of legs. There is also an array of fungi and lichens that can be found living and on and around rotting wood. Some of these fungi can be species dependent, only appearing on the wood of certain tree species. Spiders may make your skin crawl, but these arachnids fill many niches and are ecologically critical. There are many species of spider to be found on the forest floor, these spiders will often be consuming small insects and any other little critters that they can incapacitate with either their venom, their webs or their mandibles. This is a smooth newt, the most common of our native newt species. This and other British newt species can be found hiding under shelter like dead wood in the autumn and winter months. They usually go into a state of torpor called brumation to survive the winter temperatures. If you do find these under a log, it's probably the best that you don't disturb them too much and to ensure they are covered up after observing. Here we have a common toad. Similar to newts, you may also find toads and frogs showing similar brumation behaviours under shelter during the winter and autumn months. Toads are mostly nocturnal, however, so even in the summer days, they can be found taking shelter, often coming out at night to hunt. I was lucky enough to find this wood mouse, sometimes referred to as field mouse. The burrows of these mice and other species of rodents are often found beneath dead wood and other shelter. These runs are used by mice for avoiding predation but also for hunting. Although primarily seed eaters, they will eat invertebrates opportunistically. So that's been a brilliant session. We've found a complete array of animals, um, an entire ecosystem that you can see living under these logs. Uh, all the way down to your worms, millipedes that are true detritivores, all the way up to things like the field mouse we saw and amphibians that will be sort of these bigger predators in this small forest floor world. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed today um, and enjoyed seeing the cool animals you can find. I hope that you yourself uh, we'll go out and see if you can find some cool animals. Feel free to comment down below and tell us what you find. Um, and if you do like the content, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get regular content from us. Um, and this has been Nature Scope, Secret World of the Forest Floor.